Okay, Margo, would you come? Hmm? I'd like to come up and read your story. Are we doing this? Now on the serious side, <laughs> Candace, I love your poetry and, and you, you're fabulous. And, Cool. Oh, my goodness. This is called Howard and Louie. Howard and Louie roam their, in, roam their pastoral, pastoral acreage against a backdrop of big sky and mountains. There is a small field where they run and play. Howie is bigger and more aggressive than Louie and often bullies, uh, bullies him at the feeding trough. They are both friendly. Louis a little more so. No matter how many buckets of food or vegetables and grains they receive, it all goes in the feeding frenzy. Brad, the businessman turned farmer, changes into denim overalls and rubber boots when he comes home from work. With a smile, he trudges, up, trudges to their pen, carrying buckets of food. A generous local grocer who cannot bear to throw out perfectly good unsellable food provides Brad with fresh produce for Howard and Lily. Walking towards the pen, both run towards him, making loud noises and delighted that he is there. When Brad calls them by name, they come running to him, wagging their little tails. Brad believes they are smiling. Brad is new to this. A former city dweller is coming, becoming quite fond of, of them. They will even come to him, running to him even if he doesn't have food for them. They are genuinely happy to see him. Howard and Louie will come to him when he calls by no name. I already said that. Brad takes delight in their reactions at, the, at feeding time and enjoys watching them eat their food with such relish. He makes his daily runs to the grocer and brings back buckets of assorted fruits and vegetables. One day he has fresh pineapple for them. As he empties a pail filled with pineapples over the fence, he, he shouts, here's your pina colada, boys. <laughs> the feeding ritual lasts for many weeks. Howard and Louie are becoming rather large. George, Brad's new farmer friend and neighbor, sold Howard and Louie to him. George phoned and asked, how are they doing? Oh, fine, they definitely can eat and are getting bigger every day. Come over and see how they are doing. George agrees to come and see for himself. He visits and they chat and have a beer. After the beer, they walk over to, the, to Howard and Louie. George leaps onto, over the top of the fence and says, My God, what have you done? Perhaps Farmer Brad says, oh, What do you mean, what have I done? These guys are way too fat. You've been overfeeding them. You need to put them on a diet. Slim them down. Perplexed, Brad asks, how do I do that? I'll give you the name of some proper food and go easy on the amounts. Give them one bucket of fresh fruit a day. You need to slim these guys down. Howard and Louie are not too happy about this. Gone was the friendly, friendly lovable greeting uh, when they got their food. They were really pissed off at, and ignored Brad when he came around. <laughs> Many weeks passed and Howard and Louie were, uh, were a good, a good, uh, a good down, a slim size, slim size down. One day George came for them and loaded them in a pickup truck. They went reluctantly. George slammed the back and off he drove. Bradley could hardly bear to see them go or say goodbye to them. A week later, they came back, wrapped in packages of ham, sausage, lean ribs, <laughs> roasts, and bacon. Brad got over his sadness after his first feast of barbecued spare ribs. Well, I guess pig farming isn't all that sad. <laughs> <laughs>